Long story cut short, my laptop had to go into repair, I lost all my files, including video games, save files. So I'm starting again. I did think I was going to cover a break until FM25 came out. I decided against that just to try out a new style of how I go about recording the videos. So, with it being so close to the start of FM25 and the end of FM24, I'm bringing back a save that we did towards the end of last year called High Five Journey Round, where we play in the top five leagues in Europe and just have a good time. So, with a random number picker, we've actually been put in Spain with an Italian manager managing Celta Vigo. So, let's see how we go. So, yeah, Celta Vigo have hired Ronchi. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Starting off with Celta Vigo. Whether we go to another club within a year or within a few years, I do not know. But we've got a director of football called Marco Gosses, uh, who is quite decent. Assistant manager is Antonio Gomez. He is really, really good as well. Playing in a stadium called Balados, which is 24,000 capacity, built in the 1920s. We've got secure financially, 17 million transfer budget, 449,000 in the wage budget. The only thing we've ever won is the second tier of Spain uh, three times. One in 1936, one in 1982, and one 10 years after that in 1992. And uh, we've won the Skunda Division B Group I or Group 1 in the 1980s as well. So yeah, the lacking on the trophy front, hopefully we can remedy that. But the expectations is to reach all the stages of the Capital Ray. I think we can do that and reach the mid-table in La Liga. Hopefully we can do that. Apparently though, the fans want a top half finish. That might be tough. Um, I think they're expected to finish 10th or something. They're expected to finish 10th and by the way, this is with the updated database from FM Inside, which has um, all the transfers done up till the end of the transfer window as well as every single club being in the correct position for the new season. But if we go to the team of South Vigo, we've got our best players, which is Goeta, who is a goalkeeper at 36 years old, probably going to be replaced by next season. Um, Joseph Ido, who is injured for 12 to 13 months. So he's not going to be playing for this entire season he might come back towards the end of this season but he probably won't get any game time if off the bench at least Jonathan Bamba is another good player he's a left winger and right winger um, we've got Bruno Iglesias who is a striker going to be our main choice striker I think we've also got Nunes who is a centre back and we've also got Carlos Perez who's on loan at Getafe. Oscar Mingueza is a centre back and right back. Ayago Aspas, who is our AMC right winger and striker. He's a four star star player on a bit of a hefty wage because I know I and I always struggle in Spain since it was added. The wage cap in Spain. Um. We got five hundred thousand pounds to spend, pen, and we're spending three hundred and sixty-one thousand. Probably used every single player that we can use. Though some are awful, so we can get some players in. Uh, we've got three players that look decent in terms of potential that are at the club. Uh, Hugo Sotelo, who's a midfielder. William Swedberg, who I think I've bought previously. Uh, in FM and he's can get into quite a good player so yeah uh, he's one of them um, we also got Ilax Mariba who is on loan from RB Leipzig so he's not going to be joining us for next season Miguel Rodriguez is on loan to FC Utrecht he's left winger right winger and striker and we've also got Hugo Alvarez who's just the youngster 
He's only two star current ability. So yeah, um, good enough side to be mid table in this league. And as expected, it says we're tenth best team in the league. 151, 150 to one odds, and we're in the league. When Real Madrid are four to six with Mbappe and Vinicius Junior and Jude Bellingham and all that nonsense, that they can somehow afford. Obviously they can afford it because they're a big team, but you know what I mean. In terms of finances, we've been given 17 million to spend. However, we are overspending on the wage budget by just a tiny little bit, which I assume is because it doesn't update the transfer budget or the wage budget for in the game with the FM Inside update. So all these new players that have joined in real life this season aren't in the game with them at the start of FM24 they've all been added and they've been given estimated wages and yeah, it's inflated the wage budget a bit so we're gonna have to probably take it down a bit if I can but I'm gonna figure out what tactic to use and then come back in a tiny little bit and yeah get through pre-season as well and get through the transfers we've got 70 million pounds to spend hopefully Maybe we'll get some good people there. This is actually the tactic we are going to be going with. It is a 4 1 1 3 1 with a DM as a Skullando Volante on attack and a box box midfielder in the midfield. Then we've got two inverted wingers one on attack, one on support. Shadow striker on attack and advance forward on attack, as well as two full backs one on attack, one on support and two ball playing defenders and the sweeper keep on support custom control possession I don't know how it will go because I'm not doing things differently well I'm doing things differently what I will be doing instead of playing through each game myself or just quick doing playing the game and then doing simulate or picking the side and simulating the game uh, what I'll be doing is getting to the end of oh, the transfer window which we have done and then simulate all the way from then to the end of the season and just see what happens and maybe have a little rest stops in between where we can just see what on earth is happening with the club maybe in january and all that stuff but yeah we actually signed nobody um xavier ortiz was signed but i just decided to allow him to jump because he was 17 and had three star potential ability so yeah um that's him in and we also learned out this guy, Hugo Alvarez, who was in our first team plans. Um, maybe playing a few times every so often. Uh, but he's been learned out to our sport and hopefully he plays well. He's doing well so far. And uh, he can get two and a half star kind of thing be more likely to be picked by the AI. Now we've started off quite well, I would say. We did have to play Real Madrid and got thrashed against them, but then we beat Girona. And then we've recently just lost to LMS. Um, but overall, 8th place to start of the season. Not that bad. I'm expecting top half. I want to get top half if we get mid-table. I don't think we'll be getting sacked any lower than that. Relegation battle will be sacked. So yeah. Uh, they're expecting mid-table. Fans are expecting top half. Let's simulate the season and see where on earth we end up. Well, we'll end up in South Vigo. So... You guess for you guy, you got his part. That's where on earth we end up. I stop ranting eventually. So we are on the 21st of December, and as you can see, we are not doing that well. And I forced myself to come out of holiday to swap the tactic around. Um, I don't know what tactic will be so far. Maybe thinking of something like that. But instead of it being centre and midfielder and box box midfielder, it'll just be like centre midfielders on support. I don't know. Um, we'll talk about it probably at the end of the season, see how it goes. But we very may well be sacked. I don't know if you'll be sacked halfway through the simulation or if it happens at the end of the season because I've now watched people who do holiday and they end up getting sacked once the season's ended. Uh, you, they don't normally get sacked halfway through. But yeah, it's. It's been absolutely dreadful. We've got some wins like against Espanyol and Valencia, uh, Mallorca and Athletic Club Bilbao. 
Uh, got some draws against Atletico and Las Palmas, but then load, load of losses. Barcelona, to be expected. Tafe, maybe to be expected. Uh, Leganes, I expect that to be a win. Osasuna, I'm not really sure how good they are. Real Betis, I think we would lose that normally. Real Valladolid, I expect to win that. Villarreal, I expect to lose that, to be fair. So, we're expecting to lose all these teams. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how good these teams are nowadays in uh, La Liga. Uh, I don't really follow it much because it's not on TV with a subscription that I can afford. Uh, but yeah, we've played it in the Copa del Rey first round. We would be uh, Amor Beta. Amor Beta. I do not know how you pronounce that name. Uh, but next game we've got Real Madrid and if we lose that game we could very well get kicked out of the door. But yeah, uh, not good. Uh, 16th place, 20 points. To be honest, we're five points off Real Valladolid, who are in 18, so we're not exactly close to relegation. A couple of bad results here and there will probably get caught. But if we win a few games, then we'll be in seventh, so yeah. I'm going to figure out what tactic to use, simulate the rest of the season. Hopefully, I come out of the simulation, I'm not sacked. So I sort of said this in the first part, but I decided against it. But I'm doing things a bit differently in terms of what other people who do holiday and whether they don't do any January transfers. Now I'm still not doing January transfers, but what I am doing is making the assistant or the director of football and whatnot be able to sell people if they're on the transfer list. So also include loan out people as well as bring people in if so needed so as you can see we were a bit busy in january um jelson or who we were trying to let go i don't think he's good enough and so we're trying to sell him he was loaned out to Oxshare and tadio alenda who is a player i don't think was playing so i noticed he wasn't playing i noticed he wasn't happy that he wanted to go out on loan so when I was figuring out the new tactic, I just quickly did transfer loan status available for loan. Remove that now because he's going to come back and I've been first team. Uh, but people did sign. We've got Matthias Oliveira, who is a really good looking left back. He is injured uh, at the end of the season. He's a poor player. Oh, God, that is a lot of wages. Um, but we paid seven million to seven and a half million for him. Um, we also signed this guy, Achieve Fatal and Johan Chirinos, who both look no good. Um, both come from B sides, Almira, Almeria, I mean, and Grutefirth. But you want to be knowing what happened in the league, so I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to show you the results. So from the point where we left off, we actually change the tactic and simulated again actually ended up being Real Madrid 6-1 in that game with the new tactic and I just noticed it when I did and I thought okay this tactic's good we'll just tab out watch some videos maybe write a bit and see what happens in like an hour uh, it didn't go as well after that did really well in Copa del Rey getting to the fourth round though they wanted like stages so maybe not that good uh, losing to Elche in the end uh, in a 1 0 loss away from home. Um, but we've got some wins Real Velicano, Leganes, load of losses Alaves, Espanol, Valencia, Barcelona to be expected. We also lost to Mallorca. Then we've got some draws Osasuna, Real Betis, Real Valladolid, Villarreal, also beat Las Palmas. And yeah, in the end, I think because of the end of the season while we were picking up draws and the win we managed to get away from being in a relegation battle and they were still very close to being relegated mind you but we got to a respectable 13th position and now as expected the spoilers aren't happy because they wanted to top our finish we were nowhere near that so i'm not unhappy but the job security is stable hopefully it can stay that way uh, but yeah, a disappointing season. If we go around to the league and just look at some of the stats, because I never do this. Uh, we were nowhere near most goals, all field shots against, nor most possession, 
no measurable pain, no fuse conceded. Yeah, we were nowhere near. Oh, well, actually, here we are. Most shots four. So we had 416 shots with a 40% accuracy. Where we only have well, minutes since last goal, so we've got 416 shots in 38 appearance, 38 games. 40% accuracy, not the best. Uh, we're getting the shots off, so that is good, but yeah, maybe something to look at getting a better striker. In terms of any other average rings, apparently Iago Aspas, who was with, uh, who is one of our better players, he actually was meant to be better, but he's now 36 years old and he's incredibly declining. Uh, he might retire actually, uh, in actual fact. Uh, but he got the most, or second most, um, points on the free kick goals, two goals. So he tied it with, with Pereo of Villarreal Kennedy. Won that with Real Valladolid, or Real Valladolid with three. So we've got one on the player stats, and we're also in on the team stats. Okay, in terms of ratings and stuff, um, most goals scored was 26 for Iglesias, and that didn't even make him on the top three, which shows you how good the other teams are. Uh, Aspas got 10, and at 36, if he doesn't retire, I'll try and let him go at 40,000 wages. Maybe move him off, hopefully, to like Saudi Arabia or Qatar or um, UAE or somewhere with money that can afford him. Uh, or Borgia Iglesias, I mean, got 26. Bruno Iglesias uh, got 4. Um, Swedberg got 4 and played quite a lot, but I, didn't, I think I did uh, actually, I didn't in the second half of the season but in the first half I had him locked in. With assists hardly anyone. Uh, six for Ristich, uh, five for Mingueza. Mr Pouncers 40 for Mingueza and then Beltran got 39 or 40 as well. Clean sheets we only got six in the entire first season. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, I was rating though anyone over seven got three but one's on loan out and one's a low knee in. So Borja Glacier's got the highest average rating with 7.03. And then Kevin, who is our right back, who only played four times a starter and a fourth bench, got a 7.02. Uh, and he is asking to leave because he wants to have a new challenge. But never mind playing him a bit more, but it looks like he's gonna have to be sold. Not gonna get much money for him either, but yeah, that is the end of this episode. I've probably talked on a long, long time because whenever I'm starting a new save or when I haven't recorded for a long time, I just ramble. But hopefully, you've enjoyed it. So, you will have seen little parts, glimpses popping up on the screen, telling you to like the video and subscribe and all that stuff. So, if you've done that, I thank you. Um, if you want to do it now, like like the video or subscribe to the channel, you may as well because you've stuck around the whole video from when it started to now, so you may as well do it because um, you at least have the retention to continue watching. Um, check out all my socials down in the description below uh, as well as maybe coming and joining the Discord, we've got a few people on it. Uh, it's quiet because there's only like five of us. Um, but you can join it, you can come say hi, uh, we can create like a good community over on Discord, so the link to that is in the description below. But yeah, I've been Matthew, also known as Samohex, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Hex Sandgout. Bye everybody.